Hey everyone, so I've had a lot of comments that don't like my wood stove. Although, the majority of people do like it once I explain it. Some people, no matter what I say, will never listen to me, or will never believe me unless they try it for themselves. So, this stove here has a catalyst in there. It works just like the catalytic converter in your car, and it makes it far less efficient and far more energy friendly and environmentally friendly. So this thing here, most wood stoves sold these days are going to have a catalyst in them for the environmental reasons. Now, a lot of people see that as a bad thing because a lot of environmental things, they're usually weaker. They don't work as well in many ways. Now, here is the thing. When I got this and found out it had a catalyst in there, I was skeptical. I thought it was going to be a piece of junk that wouldn't last long, wouldn't go on long. But this has a manufacturer warranty up 10 years for the catalyst. If it breaks or clogs up inside, they will send me a new one for free. And even if it did completely break in an emergency, you can pull the catalyst out and you could disconnect the pipe here. You could attach a normal old-fashioned damper to run it in an emergency if you absolutely had to. Over time, dampering it like that will cause damage because the stove is not meant to run that way. But you could in an absolute emergency. I would rather keep a $10 damper for an emergency than a spare catalyst only because the catalyst is like a $600 part. That's the only reason I don't have a spare one is because they're super expensive. And you can go to the Home Depot and get a cast iron um, damper for like 10 bucks. You could probably even get a sheet metal one for cheaper, although I don't trust those ones. So, no, the catalytic converter does not clog up. So, at the beginning of the burning year, I opened up the guard on the catalyst. It was a bit clogged up, but not inside. I just brushed it with a sponge. In like 10 seconds, it all fell off. It was only on the end, not inside. Runs nice. So what it does is any smoke produced by the burning wood goes through the glowing red catalyst. The smoke is a wood gas. It burns the smoke again. So outside when you look at the chimney, it appears there's no smoke. It just looks like a heat signature coming out the top usually. When I throw a few pieces of new wood in there, it'll smoke for maybe 10, 20 minutes. But then the smoke completely stops. Yes, any wood stove will do that. Once it becomes dry, it will completely stop. But this has far less smoke overall because it's burning it up. That's the whole goal of it, less smoke. And because it's burning the smoke, it's producing more heat inside the house. So a normal wood stove can run around 60% efficiency, maybe up to 70-something percent efficiency. This runs in the upper 80s or mid-80s for efficiency. What that means is about 15% of its heat is lost up the chimney, but it keeps a lot more in the building. But the good thing about the catalyst is it burns the wood really slow. So on high, this thing runs between 12 and 20 hours, I've realized. If it runs on low, which you can only run it on low if you have good quality wood, soft wood pines, it just, it'll, it'll smother. But if you have it loaded up properly, I've got about 30 hours out of it. I've been out of town overnight, came back, just stir around the hot coal, it fires right back up. A stove without a catalyst, they're usually out in about six to eight hours. You wake up in the morning, get home from work, you have to completely rekindle the fire. But that's the good thing about this stove, it runs very efficiently have had zero problems with it yet. Not a spot of rust on it except the foot right there. I probably got snow on it or something, bringing wood in and stacking it like I did last year to dry next to it. Maybe that's what that's from. That's the reason I haven't cooked on it yet because if you start cooking on it or you have a kettle on there with water vapor, that's when it starts rusting. And it's not a big deal. You can rub it down once a year with wood stove oil. Then you run it. It'll smoke up the room for like 10, 20 minutes, and then it's good. When you get a new wood stove, it's going to smoke because it seasons itself the first time it runs. Always run it the first time outdoors or indoors with the window open. Like I bought this from a wood stove company. They installed it in the house. It wasn't pre-burned. Not a big deal. Fire it up. Leave the window open. and Just leave the house for a couple hours. Let it do its thing. It'll all leave. But, yeah, I've had a good experience with this. I was skeptical at first it was going to be a piece of junk, but it works very efficiently. So this is the setting I like to keep it on in the house right there. And the good thing I like about this stove, when I'm running my uh, fuel oil furnace, I really watch the heating bill. So I don't like even leaving my door open for a couple minutes, bringing in groceries and stuff, right? But this, I don't mind leaving the door open for a couple hours. It 
it overproduces heat, which is good. You don't have to feel bad about losing that much heat since most of the wood we're burning is free from the woods and I got like a 10-year supply of it out there. And, I, and if I don't burn it, it's going to rot. I, I think it's going to rot a lot of it before I could even use it. So that's a good thing there too. Yeah, and all my windows, they're cracked because it produces a lot of heat. And that's good. We're letting fresh air in too. So, yeah. There will be some people who don't believe what I'm saying, but if you try it for yourself, they're very efficient stoves. They, and it is actually a good thing that a lot of them still have that feature. The only thing is, supposedly it can clog up if you burn things that aren't supposed to be in there. Like if you throw garbage in there, throw cans in there. Although, I don't think it's as picky as people think it is. I've thrown cardboard in there, plasticky paper, like, you know, the shiny like coupon paper. I've thrown a bunch of things in there. Nothing's ever happened. So it's not as that picky. Just don't be burning garbage in there all the time. That's when you'll probably have problems. Like, if you buy that that sparkly stuff that you throw in there, it's metal shavings to make the fire look blue or green. Do it when the flames are small and leave the bypass open until it's done. Now, this stove, if I open the bypass, it allows flames right up the pipe because there's no damper. It can overheat the chimney pipe. That's one thing you got to watch out for. Always monitor it 100% if that's open. Keep an eye on that gauge up there. Some people say that gauge is not necessary because it doesn't have a damper. This is absolutely necessary. If it starts to get up here and go back into the black, absolutely shut that because if it's that hot, that's when a chimney fire is going to happen. So be aware of that. Did have a chimney fire last year. It completely burned itself out. I have the stainless steel piping on the outside and it can take thousands of degrees. Stove company said it's meant to have chimney fires. It'll burn itself out without any issue at all. So it didn't matter that there was a chimney fire last year. It burned out completely, but still for safety reasons. And also my insurance company requires it, which is Geico. I have to have proof that this thing was cleaned once a year in case the house was to burn down. That's the only way they will cover it. If you can prove you're cleaning it once a year by a professional, so can't do it yourself. Now we're going to go to the truck camp. So today we're at the truck camp. During the winter, I might make another video of this place. Now this has a non-catalytic stove, which is actually a knockoff. It's a fake stove. From a, It has company tags on it that I do not believe it actually came out of that factory because I got it directly from China. So this one here, when I bought it, it had a, it had a piece of catalyst. It didn't actually have a catalyst that it flows through. It's just this glowing piece of whatever you wanna call it. It smothered the fire, it ran so bad, I just completely smashed it out of the way. Now it'll operate as a normal wood stove. Now this thing here, you can see there's a good amount of rust on it. I think that's partially from cooking and also partially because it's a junk stove. It, it is a knockoff. I got this thing for about, I believe, $200, maybe $300. I don't remember, on eBay, directly from China. This company here, I looked it up, the exact stove it's supposed to be. I don't think it is from this actual company, but this company does make stoves in China, despite it saying United States. Anyways, they go for 800 bucks, so that makes me think it's fake. There's also a lot of flaws about it. Like, look at the front of it. You see how this is tilted? The bolt holes didn't line up straight, so the front's a little, eh. Yeah, I think it's fake. Also, it overheated very easily. That's what the discoloration is. I think it rusted very fast. Keep in mind, I've only camped in here three times. This thing has only ran four times. I don't think it should be looking this rough a shape. Although, it goes to hot, cold, hot, cold, summer, winter, but still I don't think it's that. Also, the pipe is rusting because these are low quality black Home Depot pipes. The pipes on the outside are galvanized. They'll last a bit longer, especially since they're not exposed to as extreme heat. But these cheap Home Depot pipes, anyone who uses those, typically if they're using them to heat their house nonstop, you got to replace them every two to three years on average, especially if you have them on the outside. Most people don't put single wall on the outside. You want double wall because it creates more creosote if it's not insulated on the outside, the pipe, double wall. The reason is if it's cold, it creates condensation inside the pipe. Smoke and debris gets stuck to it and builds up as it goes through the pipe. So this right here has a normal um, 
there's a cast iron damper in there. Anyways, this never had any kind of controls for its catalyst like mine does. I don't, I, yeah, it's a different type of catalyst. It's just a thing that's supposed to be glowing hot and the smoke passes by it. But it restricted it. It made smoke come into here. It was a piece of junk. I removed it. Now it runs as a normal stove and it runs quite well. This, because it doesn't have a normal catalyst, and also someone's going to say it's a much smaller stove. That's why it doesn't run as long. That's not actually true. My other stove may have a really big firebox, but you're not, it's not like you're putting much bigger wood in it either, if you get what I mean. You still got the fire going through everything about the same. It does matter a little, but not so much. This tier sometimes runs as little as four hours. Maybe we'll get six hours out of it. But despite I woke up a few times during extreme winter camps, freezing, having to completely restart this thing after like four or five hours, it just burns down. And we weren't burning the worst stuff. One of my camps, we were relying on just pine logs. But one, I actually had some maple here, and it did a pretty good job. Yep. Actually, this tiny little one here, actually, to an extent, runs a little more efficient than this. That's a hot tent stove I've used in some camping videos. That'll actually go a pretty long time for some reason. That's made by Guide Gear. I believe it's made in Canada. Maybe it's in the United States, but it is a good stove. The only issue I ever had with this was it had a gasket. It had a real fireproof gasket around it that was hot glued to it. Fell right off the first time I started it up. That was dumb, but it's not necessary because once you get this running, it's sucking through the cracks. So it really didn't matter. This stove also rusted up very fast, but... That's the reason I don't want to really cook on the one in the house. I want to keep it looking nice unless I actually have an emergency and need to use it. This is rusting because I was cooking on it constantly. This is a thin metal stove because you're supposed to be able to throw it in your sled or whatever. Go off into the woods and that kind of stuff. I was also playing with it, putting balls of snow on it, going watch it completely evaporate. That's why it's a little rusty, but I don't care. I also don't care that this one's rusty. I kind of like it. It goes with the rustic look. It makes it look like the stove was here a really long time. I kind of like that it's rusty. Same reason. I get so many comments saying, why don't you use the extra flooring that's stored in here, put in the truck, make it look more cozy? Because I don't want it to be more cozy. I want this thing to look like an abandoned truck. I like that the walls are metal like that. I like that the old rusted out steering wheel's still there. I like the corrugated windshield. I like that it looks very old and rustic. The only reason there's some junk in here is I'm using it as a little bit of a storage unit at the moment. The only reason there's jacks in here is in case I'm not around to clear the snow off the roof and we get like three feet. I'm hoping this may save the truck from collapsing because this was buckling the roof a little bit during a winter camp last year. That's just as a precaution in case I'm not around to shovel it out. So that's my experience with a catalytic stove versus a non-catalytic stove and a camping stove we have there. We also have this little camping stove here, which doesn't do anything as far as keep you warm at night. You have to be constantly maintaining it. It runs fast like a rocket stove, cooks your food real fast, keeps the tent nice and hot. Give it two hours, it'll be completely out. That was also a pretty good one there. Uh, I shouldn't have this here because the mice are going to get in it. If you guys remember, I had a microwave up there. I gave it to my mom because she had a, uh, I think, 1,100-watt unit. And I told her, if you keep using that, it's probably going to burn your house down. There's, it should not be where you pull the prongs out of the wall and they're hot enough to burn your arm. It's because her house is old and it just can't handle it. So I gave her a little 700-watt one to get that hazard out of her house. So... I also have this stove here. The reason I've never used it is because, and I've actually used its pipes on that one to make longer piping systems like the time I camped inside a culvert pipe. But this one here, I know it's possible, but I need someone who knows about HVAC to maybe help me with this. I want to be able to hook this thing up to maybe a propane tank, and I want to have like a, whatever you call the switch on a pilot lit like water heater, I, I want to have this thing, when it gets cold enough in the room, it automatically lights with a pile of light, and when it's warm enough in the tent or whatever I'm camping in, it shuts back down. I know there's a way without electricity to have a, a ignition system like that. I know people that have pilot lit water heaters. They turn on and off all the time, no power required. 
how could I get it to work like that in a little stove like this off a propane tank? I know it's possible, but I have no experience on how to do a system like that. I think that would be absolutely awesome if I could get something to work in that manner. And this right here, maybe in the like April, if we have a good year, I kind of want to make maple syrup again. I got this awesome burner that was actually in the abandoned truck. So maybe we can do some stuff like that too. I hope today's little video was interesting. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.